Have you ever wondered what might happen if your personal computer had the power of a quantum computer? Sounds thrilling, doesn't it? But hold your horses, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Now, what on earth is a quantum computer, you ask? Well, let's imagine your regular computer as a diligent librarian. This librarian, bless him, reads every book in the library one by one to find the information you need. It's a meticulous process, but it's time consuming. Now picture a quantum computer. Instead of our diligent librarian, we have a superhero who can read all the books in the library at the same time. In the blink of an eye, they've gathered all the information you need. It's like having the power of every librarian in the world times a zillion. Sounds fantastic, right? But there's a darker side, let's explore. Imagine if a coin could be both heads and tails at the same time. That's the superposition principle in quantum computing. Now let's dive a bit deeper into this, shall we? Consider a coin spinning in mid-air. While it's spinning, it's neither heads nor tails, but a bit of both. This is a crude yet effective way to understand the superposition principle, a cornerstone of quantum computing. In this quantum realm, things can exist in multiple states simultaneously until observed or measured. It's a bit mind-boggling, isn't it? This unique property allows quantum computers to process vast amounts of data at speeds that would leave your average computer in the dust. But here's the catch. It's a double-edged sword. Sure, we'd all love to download the entire Game of Thrones series in a blink of an eye, but this power can be exploited, leading to our first danger. Quantum computers can crack most encryption methods that protect our data online. You see, the encryption methods we currently use, think RSA or AES, depend on complex math problems that traditional computers take years to solve. But a quantum computer, with its ability to be in multiple states at once, could crack these codes faster than you can say quantum supremacy. Imagine a world where all of our online data from our banking details to our embarrassing high school photos could be accessed in mere minutes. It's like a hacker's paradise. This is no longer a far-off sci-fi scenario, folks. Companies like IBM and Google are already creating quantum computers. It's like we're handing over the keys to Fort Knox to a burglar and saying, have at it, mate. So, as we stand on the brink of this quantum revolution, it's crucial we also develop new encryption methods that can withstand a quantum onslaught. Because let's face it, no one wants their secrets spilled across the internet. It's like giving a master key to a burglar. Not so thrilling now, is it? Quantum entanglement is like a pair of twin spiders. No matter how far apart they are, if one spider moves, the other one does too. Now, if you're shuddering at the thought of eight-legged critters, fear not. It's just an analogy, but it's an analogy that helps us understand one of the most mind-boggling concepts in quantum physics quantum entanglement. Imagine for a moment two spiders spinning their webs in complete synchrony, their movements eerily mirrored no matter the distance between them. This is quantum entanglement, a peculiar phenomenon where pairs or groups of particles interact in ways such that the state of each particle is directly related to the state of the others, regardless of how far apart they are. Now, let's spin this web a bit further. Theoretically, this principle could be used to create untraceable communication channels. Picture a spider on one side of the world, its every move mirrored by its twin on the other side. Information could be passed between the two without any observable transmission. This could revolutionize secure communication, but like any powerful tool, it has its dangers. This brings us to the second danger of quantum computing, the potential for misuse in illicit activities. If these untraceable channels were to fall into the wrong hands, they could be used to conduct covert operations, with the communicators remaining undetected. It's a bit like giving a master thief a cloak of invisibility, rendering their actions untraceable and unseen. In essence, quantum entanglement, while holding immense potential for advancements in technology and communication, also presents a significant risk. It's a bit like creating a secret tunnel for thieves. If not carefully managed and regulated, it could provide a perfect conduit for illicit activities conducted under the radar and out of sight. It's like creating a secret tunnel for thieves to move unnoticed. So while we marvel at the wonders of quantum computing, let's also be mindful of the potential shadows lurking in its web. Quantum computers are like a delicate house of cards. 
A slight breeze, a small temperature change, or even a tiny vibration can bring the whole thing tumbling down. Imagine, if you will, a house of cards. It's a marvel of engineering. Every card placed with precision and balance, but it's fragile, isn't it? The smallest disturbance, a gust of wind, a nudge of the table, and it comes crashing down. This, my friends, is an apt metaphor for quantum computers. Quantum computers are not your regular desktop or laptop. They are fussy, demanding, and incredibly sensitive to their environment. They are not fond of change. Even the most minuscule fluctuation in temperature, electromagnetic fields, or even physical vibration can disrupt a quantum computer's operations. Why, you ask? Well, it's all to do with qubits, the fundamental units of quantum information. Unlike the bits in your everyday computers, which are either zeros or ones, qubits can be both at the same time. This makes them incredibly powerful, but also highly unstable. A qubit state can be flipped by even the tiniest disturbance, causing errors in the calculations. Now, imagine trying to maintain an environment so perfectly still, so perfectly quiet, and at a temperature colder than outer space. Yes, you heard that right. Colder than the vast, empty void of outer space. That's the kind of environment a quantum computer needs to function optimally. And it's not just about creating this environment. It's about maintaining it day in, day out, without fail. The cost of maintaining such an environment is astronomical. The equipment necessary to keep quantum computers in their optimal state is specialized and expensive. This is our third danger, the high cost and difficulty of maintaining quantum computers. It's not just about buying a quantum computer, it's about the commitment to its upkeep. It's like having a high maintenance pet that can potentially change the world, if only it would stop throwing tantrums at the slightest provocation. Like maintaining a house of cards in a windstorm, it's a tricky and expensive business. The race to build the most powerful quantum computer is on, but who will cross the finish line first and what will they do with such power? Picture this, we're in the throes of a modern-day gold rush. Except this time the prize isn't a shiny yellow metal, but a shimmering quantum computer. The stakes are incredibly high, with tech titans like IBM, Google, Microsoft, and a host of ambitious startups all vying for the crown. Each of them is locked in a fierce battle, not just to build the first fully functional quantum computer, but to harness its immense power. Now, why is this a concern, you ask? Well, the fourth danger of quantum computing is precisely this. The potential misuse of power. With great power comes great responsibility, and the quantum realm is no exception. Imagine having the ability to solve complex problems in seconds, problems that would take traditional computers thousands of years to crack. The possibilities are staggering, from groundbreaking scientific discoveries to unimaginable advancements in AI. But like any tool, it can be used for good or ill. The power to crack complex algorithms also means the ability to break most encryption systems that protect our data today. In the wrong hands, a quantum computer could wreak havoc on our digital world, compromising everything from financial systems to national security. And then there's the question of control. Who gets to decide how this power is used? Will it be the tech giants with their deep pockets and immense influence? Or will it be the governments with their own agendas and interests? The answers to these questions will shape the future of our digital world, and they're not easy ones to find. This is the quantum race, a race not just for technological supremacy, but for control over an immense and potentially dangerous power. It's a race with no clear rules, no established referee, and the finish line is still shrouded in mystery. So, as we stand on the precipice of this quantum leap, we must ask ourselves, are we ready to jump? A quantum computing, like a double-edged sword, holds immense potential but also significant dangers. We've taken a whirlwind tour through the quantum landscape, unravelling its enigmatic facets. From the quantum leap that has the potential to revolutionise our world, to the double-edged sword of its benefits and risks, we've seen it all. We've dived into the spider's web of quantum entanglement, a phenomenon so baffling, even Einstein called it spooky. We've peeked into the house of cards that is quantum instability, a precarious balance that could make or break the dreams of quantum computing. And let's not forget the quantum race, where nations and tech giants alike are sprinting towards quantum supremacy, 
a finish line that could redefine power dynamics globally. As we venture into this quantum realm, let's tread carefully. After all, with great power comes great responsibility, doesn't it?